Greetings, all! Today, we will be examining the relatively rare rock flying type Pokemon Minior, the Meteor Pokemon. Though their forms may seem abnormal and truly out of this world, Minior are interesting creatures that push the envelope in terms of the forms that life can take on our planet and the limits of where life can survive in our world. In their meteor form, these creatures possess a dark brown, rocky shell with a series of dark brown, triangular markings near holes in the shell that mark scorch streaks formed from the initial re-entry of these creatures when they plummet from the ozone layer onto the surface of the planet, with a series of two large black spots on the front formed as impact craters. They have a series of five pointed protrusions on their form from which parts of their body poke out, with a series of cracks that run along the entirety of their shell, showing it to be quite brittle. When exposed in their core form, these creatures have a brilliantly colored body form that is spherical in nature with five points on their body, which is mostly made out of energy. They have two large, swirly eyes and a thin mouth that marks their abnormal form, and the body comes in a total of eight different colors, including their starry black shiny form, the different colors arising as a consequence of them eating different concentrations of different compounds. Minior are fascinating creatures whose origins are still not entirely understood, but it is believed that these creatures were formed from the mutation of organic nanoparticles that coalesced into large clumps and fused together to create a being whose body is mostly made out of energy, with only a little bit of organic matter comprising them at the core of their true body. These creatures feed on energetic particles and bits of debris in the ozone layer, far above where most forms of life can readily survive, and they are able to do this as their bodies are adapted to be able to survive easily in the extremely low pressures present in the outermost layers of the planet's atmosphere. However, as these creatures feed on the particles in this part of the atmosphere, their bodies can only process so much, and some of the rocky material that they cannot process is excreted outwards to form a thin shell around them that ordinarily helps to keep them safe from attack, providing a barrier to them and the few predators that can reach them so high into the atmosphere, such as Rayquaza. However, this is a double-edged sword, for if these creatures have to move out of the way suddenly, and their shell proves to be too heavy for them, the pull of our planet's gravity can cause the electromagnetic field that these creatures emit to keep themselves suspended in the air to be overridden, causing them to crash into the planet's surface. This impact has the effect of damaging the shell that they are contained in, and that is a problem because the higher pressures at the surface are deadly to them if they are exposed to it for too long. As such, these creatures are almost always found with a cracked shell on them that not only reduces their overall mobility and weakens their capacity to attack much, leaving them with only moderately strong defenses to protect themselves with from attack, but it is also very brittle and can easily be destroyed with a fairly strong impact after their initial arrival. At the same time though, this shell serves a great purpose in that it helps to protect these creatures from being afflicted by any status conditions whatsoever, so long as it is present making it a useful barrier for them to use against the assaults of others. However, this shell is not completely impervious and can be destroyed at least temporarily in the right cases, as is exhibited in their signature Shields Down ability. In essence, this shell will act to keep the defenses of these creatures strong as long as it is present and protects them against status conditions. But if the HP dips below 50% of its maximum value at any time, it will cause the shell to break revealing the true core that is the life form itself. In this state, these creatures suffer a severe cut to their defensive stats and thus become highly vulnerable to attack. But on the upside, this also frees them and allows them to maximize their overall damage output, effectively swapping the values of their base offensive and defensive stats and doubling their base speed stat, making them incredibly nimble and among the fastest of Pokemon of their type. As such, while the base special defense stat is the only one that is above average for fully evolved rock type Pokemon, and the base defense and special defense stats for fully evolved flying type Pokemon while in their meteor form, so named because they look like meteors when they crash down through the sky from high above, in their core form, their base attack, special attack, and speed stats are all above average for fully evolved Pokemon of both of their types in almost both instances, their base attack stat being just a tiny bit below average as a rock type, though to a point so small that it might as well be right on the money. While in this state, these creatures are in a very delicate state of existence as their bodies are not made to be able to survive at the higher pressures on the surface of the earth, and because of this, they will usually die if they are exposed to the outside air for more than a few minutes unshielded. 
Thankfully, unlike in the ozone layer, the atmosphere of the surface world is so rife with dust and debris that they can easily reform their shell if their energy is restored to above 50% of its maximum value, and they can also be saved by placing them in a capture device, as the interior will automatically pressurize itself to be as conducive to their survival as possible. It is very rare to see them in this state, as they will often spend much of the time they are on the surface rubbing against rocks in order to lighten their shells so they can return to the ozone layer. And rare to see them all in truth, for they generally do not make the trip from the upper layers of the atmosphere safely, the Alola region being one of the few places where they seem to be able to safely touch down at, though why this is the case is still uncertain. Regardless, these creatures have a surprising degree of control over the wind and air around them and can make good use of their bodies to attack, and even if they are very hard to come by in most parts of the world, the unique switcheroo they can play on opponents from defensive to offensive strategies based on their current situation can nonetheless make them a tactical nightmare and more than capable of proving to be a serious hassle to have to deal with no matter what form they take. Though their forms might make them less than conventional when it comes to dealing with most types of opponents, Minior are fascinating creatures that can more than prove to be a real nightmare to handle if they can't be eliminated quickly. Whether it's attacking without fear of being inflicted with debilitating conditions, or blasting around at high speed to deal severe damage, these strange creatures can be useful in a fight and prove to be capable of using moves like Shell Smash and Explosion to great effect when prompted. Just do yourself a favor and try not to stand too close where they're likely to fall if you see one approaching from on high. They might not make much of a crater when they hit, their shell taking most of the impact's energy, but that might mean little if they hit you, or even if it's a near miss, decide to take their anger out on you for not being able to immediately return home where they are safe. Thank you all for watching this video. It is always an honor to be able to speak with you all on the subject of Pokemon in a way that brings me great joy and happiness in my work. If you would like to keep tabs on past and future work, click that subscribe button, check out my work on DeviantArt, and don't be shy about following me on Twitter, where you can find pertinent announcements on upcoming work before it is officially posted. Links to both can be found in the video description. If you would like to support my work and help Miguel and I continue to produce more content for you and improve upon our presentation, please visit us at my Patreon page, which you can also find a link to in the video description. Yeah, no. With that, I thank you for watching and I wish you well.